welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If this is your first time on the channel, consider subscribing as it helps out the channel and give this video a like if you do like it. So this is a review for Book Review. Released in 1946, it's the 464th in the series and it's directed by Bob Clampett. You can find this on the Looney Tunes Golden Collection Volume 2 DVD set and the Platinum Collection Volume 2 Blu-ray set, both with the Michael Barry commentary which you should listen to after this. But with me today is another character, Manny Cruz. Say hi. Greetings and salutations, everyone. Due to copyright on YouTube, I can't show you the full cartoon, so in case you haven't seen it, this cartoon is simply a cartoon that takes place in a bookstore where all sorts of book-related characters are having a lot of musical fun. This annoys Daffy, who turns into Danny Kaye for some reason, and he ends up encountering a wolf and... It's an insane cartoon, <laughs> let me put it that way. Now, as this scene shows a reenactment of what happened between me and Warner Legal, now I had to take down the original audio commentary that was on this channel, so here is a reworked version of that commentary, reworked into a review with a rating inserted at the very end. Enjoy. What a way to start 1946, huh? Like, this absolute masterpiece. Like, there's no... No question. This is a masterpiece. One of the best Looney Tunes ever made. Ever. Hands down. There's n there's um, no argument about that one. This is one of those cartoons that I think that you don't appreciate how great it is until you do a several rewatches. Or in my case, I haven't seen it in a while. And then when I did, I'm like just absolutely floored by the animation by the music by the atmosphere and, and as we were saying before it's just the tons of energy that Clampett was letting out in this period it's just like and he went out with a bang you know well one oh, of the yeah. last cartoons he did i asked many this before we recorded and yes uh, people the girls were actually literally fainting at the sight of you know frank snatcher and his you know beautiful voice um similar to also what the girls did when the beatles were around in the 60s and I guess in the early or 2010s, when we were kids. One, one Direction, One Direction in the early 2010s, I guess, you know, with all the Or, you and... know, when we were growing up, you know, we had uh, Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, so we're showing our age, aren't we? <laughs> well, it, it's interesting because this, I believe, is the last book-related short that Warners did. I don't recall there being another one after this. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, from Manny, what I've but... read, yeah, I, from what I've read, this was the last one. It's just like just everything coming together in one fantastic finale. It's not Clampett's first books come to life. One, he did another one called A Koi Decoy, which aside from a few problematic elements was actually quite solid. But this one really takes the theme of books and just goes, like, it, it turns up, cranks up to 11 compared to A Koi Decoy, at least in my um, opinion. Um, not to mention the Tash and Books trilogy too. And we're going to see an interesting thing here, that, that, that Mary Melody's Looney Tunes comics, that actually was the trade dress to the um, comics at the time, and I should know because I do sell comics for a living too. And, and yeah, they actually did uh, look like that. So Manny, I brought you along because you are, of course, you know your music. At least I hope so. I hope you didn't lie to me. But <laughs> I, I tried wanted to tell everyone... Um, who exactly is Daffy dressed up as now, and like what? What, what is he? What's the reference to? So Daffy is imitating the comedian Danny Kay in in his speech and his mannerisms and his look, and that. Oh, right here we have La Cucaracha, of course, a very famous Mexican song. But just before that, you heard uh, the violin playing the melody of Dark Eyes. Again, just the the contrasts of the music from dark eyes into la cucaracha into caroline in the morning and it's, when you think about it doesn't doesn't make any sense whatsoever but yet clamp it made it work usually when you think of russian music or russian iconography you hear that song but it's just i love that scene because of how it starts off like we say in music it starts off at a very soft dynamic a piano and it starts a crescendo into the to the cucaracha section and now we're here listening to the song danny daffy k i guess you want to call him singing the song Caroline in the Morning, or as he says, Carolina in the Morning. And now we go to the amazing scat section that what Danny Kay was famous for doing as well. And you would probably see, if you're familiar with the cartoon, um, Hot Cross Bunny, uh, McKimson. I think it was this year, or 1947, if I remember correctly, where Bugs did a similar scene 
It might even be the same audio track of uh, Bugs Money doing the scat singing that Daffy's doing here. And who else but Clamper would do that giant eyeball just as we see a wonderful dad joke there, the Hubble on Cassidy, but... Uh, um... On this part, which is uh, was cut out of... Uh, all the times I saw it on Cartoon Network, the, the Uncle Tom's Cabin reference. The mm, Petrified Forest. Petrified Forest, of course. Forest, uh, of uh, course. Uh, uh. Now, uh, uh, one of the things I w- wasn't aware of, and that's why I asked you to maybe find out and let me know, is the song that's played when this uh, long arm of the law catches this uh, wolf and puts him in front of the judge. I mean, wh- what, what's, what are they doing here? It's funny that you say that because I was thinking the same thing for years. I'm like, what is this melody they're singing? And... As time went on, I started piecing together, oh, I've heard this melody in other uh, Warner Brothers cartoons. For example, at the ending of Back Alley Oprah, you hear all the cats singing this. And the answer is, I won't, no, I'll tell you. That is um, from the opera Lucia di Lammermoor from the uh, Italian composer Donizetti, Gaetano Donizetti. And it's a sextet, so six singers singing at the same time. That happens in the end of the second act of that opera. And there, another instance of that uh, piece um, is also heard in um, I Love the Singer when one of the owls hatches. And it goes, dee, 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 when he comes out of the egg, it's the same piece. It's one of those shorts where it's similar to the movie Duck Soup is to me where um, the famous uh, Marx Brothers film where every time I see it I notice a new detail that I hadn't seen before for whatever reason so in the recent rewatches in this one I saw I didn't notice the whole Shakespeare um, mechanical thing on his chest whatever that is like when, when, when the <laughs> Cherokee strip happens you, if you look very close he's now smiling the second time you see him I just I never noticed that before for whatever reason Oh, uh, I never plus, picked that up either. Wow! Yeah, and at the at the end, if you look at the the dance at the end when the, when they're all celebrating before the, the wolf comes back and says, you know, the Joe Bessner, you know, um, you fellies thing. <laughs> uh, if you look at the background, those dancing figures are incredibly crude, and it makes you wonder: was Clampett running a bit behind on this one that he couldn't quite finish, you know, having character character, you know, the different things uh, dance in the background. So it's really, it's 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 things that you just notice whenever you watch it. Um, but what, what's your favorite part of this short? Because everyone's got a favorite part, I find. Oh come on, There's, that's like asking who's your favorite child. Clearly, we know I'm my parents' favorite child. You know, it's funny. I'm like I'm going through the file and I'm freeze framing it. And again, like you just said, with uh, just before the wolf yells at the end of the cartoon, I never noticed that the little figures on the ground. Wow. Um, one other thing that I wanted to point out of things you didn't notice, uh, at the part where the wolf is about to attack Daffy, you have all the text that's behind him. I guess it's a cutout from a magazine or a newspaper. And when Daffy and the wolf start moving along, um, you see the backdrop turn from text into a blue sky, similar to what we saw in Trap Happy Porky, where the, the scenery completely changes and you don't even notice it. That's how seamless it was. So one other thing I want to bring up. But as for my favorite scene, oh, obviously they're both both musical related. It's uh, I have to probably go with near the end of the little musical section where you see the caricatures of Benny Goodman and Harry James and Tommy Dorsey playing. But especially the part where you have Gene Krupa playing the drums when he starts playing the buttons of um, of the of the chubby fellow. And it's just the whole band starts coming in. It's just musically, it's so brilliant. And then, boom, comes to a halt when Daffy K starts doing his little spiel. And I, uh, it's probably those two. Like the ending of the It Had to Be You, which is a song that Sinatra sings. And then the band continues on with. And then when Daffy starts going into the speaking about the, the old country and that whole part right there. And it's funny, for years I always found the term balalaika to be so hilarious. And then when I realized he was actually talking about a real Russian stringed instrument, I was like, wow, you learn something new every day. But yeah. I, yeah, it has to be those, it's just that whole musical section with the craziness of the big band and then Daffy doing his uh, Danny Kaye impression. It's just the, the violin playing the melody of Dark Eyes. It's just, it's like such a huge contrast from a big band right to one solo violin playing and it's just like Carl Stalling must have had a field day 
That's you know, really scoring funny. this cartoon and just having the time of his life. See, I'm kind of embarrassed saying my favorite bits, but it's a tie between that stupid Whistler's mother screaming bit that just gets me every time. <laughs> But also being a dad and um, being a connoisseur of dad jokes. But um, there's a book that's towards the end it's called So Big. And it's just a guy with a gigantic nose. And I'm wondering, what is in that book? <laughs> oh, uh, Jimmy Durante. That's uh, the guy, the, the, the schnazola. But yeah, I have no idea what the book's about. But it's just... Exactly. Yeah, I see. It's just like, aha, they're making fun of his nose. I get it. Uh Aha. I get it. I get it. And now for my rating, since I wasn't doing ratings at the time of the audio commentary. This one is easily 9.5 out of 10. In fact, you know what? It's 10 out of 10. I'm sorry. This is a masterpiece. And it gets better every time I see it. You can freeze frame this thing. And it's just, you see some really weird stuff. The music is incredible. And most importantly... It's funny. So yeah, you know what? 10 out of 10. And while Manny's not here to give his review, I can tell you he'll probably give it about the same. But yeah, f- wonderful cartoon. So we'll wrap it up here so we're not going too long, but I may even do a deep dive into this one one day and, and literally analyze every single frame because this is a masterpiece. But um, now thanks, Manny, for joining me. And until next time, everyone, take care. Thank <laughs> you.